So in the last week, we were discussing eigenvectors and uh, eigenvalues of a given linear transformation. And uh, we also discussed uh, techniques to compute eigenvalues of a given linear transformation by considering its uh, characteristic polynomial. And we studied these characteristic polynomials uh, in great detail to discuss uh, po potential diagonalizability of our given linear operator. So in this week, however, we take off in a slightly different direction. We would like to discuss uh, a potential generalization of the notion of uh, length that we are familiar with in say R2 or in R3. So for example, if uh, a vector 2, 3 comma 4 is given, in 3 comma 4 in R2 is given to you, uh, we know that the distance of or the length of this vector uh, 2, 3 comma 4 is square root of 3 square plus 4 square which is 5. We would like to ask the following question. Can this notion of uh, length which we are quite familiar with in R2, can this notion be generalized to a abstract vector space? So given an arbitrary vector space, can we say uh, about a notion of length in that vector space? So that will be the goal uh, of uh, our next immediate goal. However, uh, before we venture into answering any of these questions, uh, we would like to discuss vector spaces over a different field of scalars than real numbers. So uh, let us begin by uh, recalling uh, what our uh, basic properties of complex numbers were. So recall that C which is the set of all elements of the type A plus I B where A and B are real numbers. So C comes with a natural notion of uh, addition and multiplication. So it has two operations. What are the addition of uh, two complex numbers and multiplication? And how are they uh, defined? So addition, let us see how addition is defined. If say a plus i b is added to c plus i d, this is just a plus c plus i times, so this is not d, I am sorry, this is b, so i times b plus d. And uh, how about multiplication? Multiplication is uh, defined as say a plus i b times c plus i d is equal to a c minus b d plus i times a d plus b c. So just like in the case of uh, real numbers, the complex numbers with these, uh, these or rather the operations that we just defined on the complex numbers also satisfies all those good properties which we had discussed in the very first week. So complex numbers uh, or these operations rather satisfy all these properties. What are the properties that uh, real numbers satisfied with addition and multiplication there? It was commutative if you take two complex numbers, the order in which we add does not matter, the order in which we multiply did not matter, associativity if we add or multiply three complex numbers. Associativity. The order, the which one we uh, multiplied first and which one was multiplied to it, or which two we added first and the third one which was added to the first, uh, the sum of the first two didn't matter. So associativity was there, and given any complex number, there is an additive inverse. additive inverse 
So if a plus ib is given to you minus a plus i times minus b is an additive inverse. Oh, before additive inverse I should mention additive identity. So 0 plus i times 0 where x is an additive identity. If you add any complex number to 0 which is 0 plus i times 0, you get back the complex number where x is an additive identity. which is 0 plus i times 0, well every complex number has an additive inverse. What more? There was a multiplicative identity 1 in the case of real numbers here also 1 plus 0 times i which we will denote as 1 itself again. So, 1 is the multiplicative identity. What more? Every non-zero complex number, I will leave that as an exercise for you to explicitly calculate the inverse. Every non-zero, so am I writing the number wrong? Yes, I am. This is 5. Every non-zero complex number has an inverse, as a multiplicative inverse. So, let me write it specifically multiplicative inverse. And finally, the multiplication distributes over addition. So, all those properties which real numbers uh, with its so all those properties which real numbers uh, along with its multiplication uh, addition and multiplication operation satisfied is satisfied by complex numbers as well. So we may consider complex numbers with the operations of addition and multiplication which we just defined, we can consider complex numbers also as a potential candidate for being the field of scalars. So we could, so the complex numbers, uh, let me write it down here, we could also consider the complex numbers as the field of scalars in order to define a vector space, in order to define a vector space. So, we could define a vector space uh, over complex numbers, sometimes it is called such vector spaces are called complex vector spaces, then uh, the definition will be the exact same definition as we have given. Instead of considering scalars to be real numbers, now our scalars will be complex numbers. The same definition uh, can really be taken as a definition for uh, vector spaces over C as well. Let us look at a few examples. So, we will not spend too much time discussing uh, the examples again because uh, we are quite familiar now with the notion of vector spaces over R over the field of scalars being real numbers. The notion, the idea of a vector space over complex numbers is extremely identical to those uh, notions which we have discussed in detail. We just have to be careful that whenever we consider a scalar, now we are considering complex numbers if it is a vector space over C. So, the first example should be the zero vector space. This is also a vector space over R, uh, over C is a vector space so over C. So, you could take any complex number, define the scalar multiplication, the addition, vector addition could be defined as in the earlier case. Take any complex number, define the scalar multiplication of that complex number to 0 as 0 itself. And with these operations, 
this set will turn out to be a vector space over C. Example 2, so I will not spend any more time uh, discussing the properties 1 to 8. Of course, all those have to be settled, all those have to be satisfied and it is a uh, job for you to do that. This time however, you should be careful, we have to check all those properties 1 to 8 with scalars from complex numbers. All these properties should be satisfied for scalars being complex numbers. How about the second example, C itself is a vector space, so V is equal to C is a vector space over C. How is the vector addition, the usual addition and how is the scalar multiplication? Take a scalar which is now a complex number and take a vector which is again a complex number. The scalar multiplication will just turn out to be the normal multiplication. This becomes a vector space over C. Uh, next example will be the Cartesian product of C with itself n times. You see there is an analogous example, we are taking analog analogous examples. So over there Rn was the example of uh, the linear space, here over C we would like to consider Cn which will be just Z1 to Zn where each of these Zi's are complex numbers. And how is addition defined? Addition is defined component wise. How is scalar multiplication defined? Again it is defined component wise. So let me not venture uh, into that, let me not spend more time on that. This is a vector space over C. How about polynomials? So that is the next example. So let me write Pn of C. So V is Pn of C in this case. So notice over there it was Pn of R. What would be the what would be your guess on the definition of P n of C? This is going to be all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. However, this time we are going to have coefficients from complex numbers. So, polynomials with coefficients with degree less than or equal to n, less than or equal to n and coefficients in C. And example, so what is the addition here, right? Before going into the next example, the addition is just like addition, usual addition uh, in P and of R, just uh, in this case uh, we are adding complex coefficients rather than real coefficients. Similarly, scalar multiplication is defined just like in P and of R. However, now we are multiplying a scalar which is a complex number to each of the coefficients. Similarly, P, uh, P, of, uh, P of C is the space of all polynomials with complex coefficients. So, let me write more in a more compact manner. When I write complex coefficients, it means coefficients in C. So the, the coefficients of polynomials here could be complex numbers. All right. What other examples? Okay, next example. Example six is uh, let's say we considered continuous functions, real valued continuous functions. Now let us consider. Let me put a comma and put a C to denote that now we are considering complex valued continuous functions. So this is defined to be the set of all f from 0, 1 to c such that f is continuous. How is the addition defined? Again it will be defined point wise, f plus g at a point x will be f of x plus g of x. Now notice that f of x is a complex number, g of x is also a complex number, we can add two complex numbers and get back a complex number and therefore f plus g will now be a function from 0, 1 into c. And uh, uh, a real analysis course will tell you that sum of two such complex valued continuous functions will again be a continuous function. Similarly, we define 
scalar multiplication. We take a complex number, uh, let's call it alpha, alpha times f at a point x will be alpha times f of x. Alpha is a complex number, f of x is a complex number, the multiplication will give you a complex number. This is hence a map from 0, 1 to c. And again, a course in real analysis would tell you that this is also a complex number. The domain was not special, we could have so maybe 6 prime example, 6 prime could have been something like say c minus 1, 1 to c as well. So, this is just going to be f from minus 1, 1 comma uh, minus 1 comma 1 into c and such that f is continuous and define addition and uh, scalar multiplication similarly. Okay. More examples, a very important example is m, m cross n of c. Again, I do not need to really write it down because uh, this is just the matrices a11 to a1n, am1 to amn. But now our a, i, j are not just real numbers, they are potentially complex numbers. And the vector addition is defined component wise, scalar multiplication is also defined component wise. So, yes, so we could uh, consider vector spaces over complex numbers and uh, there are so many examples as we can see. Right, so if you go back to uh, our previous uh, week material and carefully look into it, we were defining a linear combination of vectors in a vector space and how was a linear combination defined? A linear combination was defined as a uh, vector, a linear combination was defined of say v1 to vn was defined as a1 v1 plus a2 v2 up to a and vn and we were demanding that a is b scalars. Now, we could define linear combination with uh, in, in a complex vector space, in a vector space over C could be defined, is defined rather analogously, defined with coefficients or scalars being complex numbers. So, in a vector space over C, in one of the say examples which we have just descri described, a linear combination could be defined analogously by or rather the definition was already given in a very general case uh, wherein we just use the word scalar. Here our scalar now is complex numbers. We could now define uh, the or rather we do not need to define again, we have already defined the notion of linear independence goes through exactly uh, how we had defined earlier. We could also define span, span now will be all linear combinations with uh, the coefficients or the scalars being complex numbers. So, span makes sense, basis makes sense, a ba basis of a complex vector space will be a linearly independent set which spans our given vector space. We could talk about uh, the replacement theorem the dimension theorem uh, before coming to the dimension theorem, replacement theorem and the fact that uh, uh, a basis, if there is a finite basis, every other basis will have the same size. All these results, if you go back and check carefully, the proofs, the statement and the proofs will go through for the field of scalars being complex numbers. Main reason being that we have really not used any specific properties of the field of scalars to prove any of these results. We have just used the properties of the vector space operations for our uh, results to be proved. Right, so we could also define or rather we have already defined uh, what linear transformations are between vector spaces over a given, uh, so we have so, the definitions of uh, linear transformation 
between vector spaces v and w over complex numbers is given analogously so the structures are preserved so vector addition is preserved there is nothing new there however when scalar multiplication is being preserved now we demand that the scalar will be a complex number right so a thing to note here is that we cannot talk about uh, linear transformations from a vector space over the complex numbers to a vector space over the real number so if v is a vector space over c and w is a vector space over r it doesn't make sense to demand uh, that there exists a linear transformation from v to w because the scalar multiplication in v is with respect to complex numbers and the scalar multiplication in w is with respect to real numbers the scalar multiplication of uh, a complex number and a vector in w does not make sense so we cannot even demand or we cannot even give sense to a definition of a linear transformation from a vector space over c to a vector space over r or for that matter a vector space over r to a vector space over c so whenever we talk about linear transformations it will be with it will be over a uh, over the same field of scalars either it will be over the uh, field of scalars being real numbers vector spaces over real numbers or it will be between vector spaces over complex numbers so all these statements and uh, theorems which we have given about linear transformations in the last many weeks they hold for linear transformation between vector spaces over c as well should actually go back and carefully look at each of these statements and proofs and notice that the proof really works even if we are considering vector complex vector spaces so let me just note that all the theorems and proofs given in the last weeks last few weeks hold for linear transformations between vector spaces over c so even for complex vector spaces or for vector spaces over the field of scalars being complex numbers all these theorems hold for example dimension theorem holds all the consequences of dimension theorem holds for example in a complex vector space if the dimension of the vector space is uh, the complex the dimension is n as a complex vector space then if you consider a set of n linearly independent vectors in that vector space v then it should necessarily be a basis so not just the uh, results about dimension theorem or its consequences every definition and every result that followed for example eigen values uh, eigen vectors etc can be defined in the case of uh, complex vector spaces and linear transformation between vector spaces over c so in this case now eigen value will just turn out to be a complex number instead of uh, a real number it could be a real number which is also a complex number but do keep in mind that when we are considering linear operators from a vector space over c to itself our uh, eigen values could be complex numbers so eigen vectors will so the matrix there could be so we can we also have the notion of the matrix associated to a linear transformation will now just turn out to be an m cross n matrix with entries in c the associate matrix associated to a linear transformation with respect to basis in the complex vector spaces v and w 
finite dimensional comp complex vector spaces V and W will now be an M cross N matrix where M and N are respectively dimensions of W and V. But now the entries will be in C. So instead of real uh, entries, it could have now complex entries. We could also talk about as already noted, we can define eigenvectors, eigenvalues, eigenspaces, the characteristic polynomial and all related notions analogously. The notions similarly with scalars being complex numbers. So, in particular eigenvalues could now be complex numbers. Our characteristic polynomial of uh, an n cross n matrix over C or a linear operator uh, on a vector space V over C will now be a polynomial over complex numbers and not just necessarily not just over real numbers it could be having coefficients which are complex numbers. Of course, the impact of uh, considering vector spaces over C, the impact of uh, complex numbers and its operations or the various properties of complex numbers and its uh, operations does have some uh, implication on, on uh, uh, the various properties of the linear transformation. However, we will not explore too much uh, in that direction in this course. So, what I meant is for example, if our, uh, our linear operator is on a vector space V over C, then if you consider the characteristic polynomial, it will be an n degree polynomial over C and the complex numbers have a, an added advantage as compared to the real numbers that you look at any polynomial, it should necessarily split into real factors uh, sorry linear factors that is not necessarily the case in the case of r for example when you look at lambda square plus 1 it does not split but in c uh, every polynomial splits into linear factors so therefore the question of diagonalizability whether uh, if our characteristic polynomial splits or not will not be a problem of concern for us however we will not uh, venture too much in that direction now let us go ahead and uh, uh, study more uh, uh, ideas and more notions on uh, vector spaces and not restrict in the, uh, in the direction of uh, what will be the implication of various properties of complex numbers. All right, so let me stop by uh, making a remark here by making an observation here. So, let me just call it a remark. So, if uh, you consider V to be the complex set of complex numbers, then so let V be the set of complex numbers, then V is uh, both a vector space over C, so a vector space over C as has already been noted. And if you go back to the first week and look at our examples, It is also a vector space over R and a vector space over R. So, the same set C or V in this case is a vector space over uh, C or the field of scalars being considered as complex numbers and it is also a vector space over R when the field of scalars is being considered over R. However, it should be kept in mind that even though it is the same set which is becoming a real vector space or a complex vector space, both are not the same. These vector spaces are not the same, are not the same. So, remember that uh, vector space is not just the set, it is a set with two more operations. It is the collection of these three objects, the set and the two operations which makes it into a vector space. 
So here the operations change when you are considering it as a vector space over R and when considering it as a vector space over C, the operations change and that is precisely what it means to say that the vector spaces are not the same. Just to give you an idea about uh, why it is not the same, I, I will allow you to uh, check it, the, check that the check a basis for V over R. So check that, I will just give you an example, 1 comma i is a basis of V or let me just write V in this case it is C over R. However, note that this set is not even, so let, let me call it B, note that B beta is not linearly independent. So, these are two vectors in C, right, but these vectors are not linearly independent when you consider V as a vector space over R, when V is considered as a vector space over C, sorry, when you are considering it as a vector space over C, this is not even linearly independent. For example, you would like to look at A times 1 plus B times I to be equal to 0. Now remember that we now want a comma b to be c, not both, where both are not 0, such that both a and b aren't are not 0. So a moment's thought will reveal that a equal to 1 and b equal to i, both are complex numbers. If you put a equal to 1 and b equal to i, what will be the relation that we just wrote? It will be 1 times 1 which is 1 plus i times i which is minus 1 is equal to 0. So, this is not linearly independent. So, I would also leave you to check that 1 is a basis, the set beta prime which is equal to 1 is a basis of V over C. So, if you consider a vector, the vector space of complex numbers over C, it has dimension 1. So, dimension of V over C here is equal to 1. What was the dimension here? Hence, dimension of the vector space V as a vector space over R, this is equal to 2. So, they are not the same, they are different vector spaces when considered and it should not be confused. So, whenever there is a vector space involved, from now on we will keep track of whether it is a vector space over real numbers or whether it is a vector space over complex numbers. And we will now, now jump into uh, the notion of uh, an inner product space, which is the right object to look at in order to talk about lengths in a vector space.